Welcome back to the lunch table, Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz, very special guest in the building, man. Uh, we had like a super elongated conversation right before this and some boba. Uh, <laughs> he goes by the name of Mark Redito. Mark, what's poppin', man? What's up, man? Thank you for having me. Yo, it's <laughs> funny because I, I picked up Mark at the train station. I wore this shirt. <laughs> You know, Poggy LA, shout out. It says Aswang. And like, I seen Mark from the distance and I told Ange, like, bro, we're wearing the same fucking shirt. Same shirt, same shirt. Yeah. Yo. Shout out to Poggy LA. Shout out Poggy LA. Shout out Mikey, too. Like, these yeah. shirts are fucking tight, bro. Yeah. But, you know, I, at that moment, I was like, yo, it's going to be a good day. It's, it's going to be, be a, a really day. good yeah. day, man. <laughs> um, shit. So, I mean, earlier you said you came out from fucking Long Beach, Long bro. Long Beach, bro. Yeah, yeah. I've been living there for. Three years now. Three years? Yeah. Okay, so where were you before that? Before that, I was living in Rancho Cucamonga. That's where my family lived. Yeah. That's hella far. Hella far. It's like way out in the boonies, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what made you move out to Long Beach? Um, Primarily uh, through, well, you know, I got married and uh, my, my wife used to work for the uh, Long Beach School District. Okay. So, you know, it was near where she worked. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and so for me, like, as an as a independent musician, I could work anywhere. So, yeah, man. So, yeah. I feel like, because you were telling me that you were you were just working from your house, just making beats yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So yeah. then how long have you been making music for then? Oh, man. I, I would say... Probably like more than a decade now. Um, Holy shit! Yeah, like half. That's of crazy. It, half of it was when I was still living in the Philippines. Yeah. So I so I, I grew up there. Um, so around 2006, 2007, 2008 was when I started my solo project, um, Spaz Kid. Okay. And that was when I was in Manila. Um, you know, played some shows out there, collaborated with people, and then around 2008. That's when I've, um, you know, decided to, you know, expand my musical knowledge and go to the U.S., Mm. um, go to music school and also be with my family. Yeah. I was the only, I was the only uh, person left like in in Manila during that time. All my family was was living here. So wait, why'd your family move out there and just leave and leave you there? Um, It was basically, well... So my dad had uh, an opportunity to work in, in gotcha. the states, and then he sponsored like you know my, my my sisters. But during that time, I was already over the age of twenty one or something like that. Yeah, and, and so my dad couldn't sponsor me anymore, and so he was like, well, "Just you know, take care of family property and take care of our house." And you know, gotcha. like, and it made sense for me too because I was like, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna pursue music here in 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 the Philippines in mm-hmm. Manila." And yeah, and I also had a girlfriend in Manila during that time. So same sort of same like, girlfriend? No. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so so yeah, it you know it just made sense during that time. I feel you, man. Yeah. Um, so you know when I was listening to your music earlier this morning too, like it's very dan like electronic dance type of thing, right? Like it's very vibrant. It's some shit that sounds like it belongs on Selection on some real shit. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like Thanks, it, you know it's really cool, man. And um. You know, whenever I would take trips back to the Philippines, I would actually never hear songs like that. So mm. then how did you even grab that sound back in like 2008, 2007? Yeah, it's, I've always been, I, I grew up with Western music. Um, I grew up with, you know, playing in bands. Um, I, I guess just like, I, I just like listening to music that's obscure and it's, it's underground and it's different. Who are you listening to? Um, I, I grew up like playing in like punk bands and punk music. Okay. So, so a lot of like punk uh, during that time. Um, I'm a big fan of like this band like Spaz, um, which later on became the inspiration for my solo project for Spaz, yeah, Kid. Spaz Kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just a lot of like different hardcore bands. Yeah, um, yeah. Growing up, but. Um, I always fi- found a uh, affinity or a leaning towards music that's underground, that's uh, you know um, uh, not given enough attention. Yeah, so, for sure. You know, like a lot of indie music coming from the states was like a big inspiration of mine. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's where 
um, a lot of innovation is happening. For sure. Yeah. Well, because, uh, you know, as like an independent artist or somebody who's working from the underground, you have the liberty to experiment however you 100%. want. 100%. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and also you're limited by the resources that you have because you're self-funded, <laughs> yeah. and that forces you to become really creative. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's why, like you know, like you can see, I have an MPD like right hey. over there too. So you know, I was making shit I on my drum. Yeah, 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 like it's tight, but it's like you know, growing up, I always thought like, oh, I need this keyboard because so and so was using it. But in reality, it's that's just what they were comfortable using. Exactly. And you kind you know, as you said, you have to use what you have and that kind of forces you to be creative in that sense. Hundred percent. And then and then that also sometimes evolves into like your own sound or your own vibe. Yeah. You know, like people who make like you know, make boom bop beats or like chill beats or whatever. Um, I think the the uh, how that started is like people are just using NPCs, uh, you know, like, like, yeah. and that gives a certain characteristic to it, like a lo-fi characteristic. Yeah, and yeah. then, you know, other people moved on to using this SPDs and those are really lo-fi instruments, man. And so, and that gives it that little like crunch and that crack that yeah, you hear yeah. from like chill hop and like, and, and you know, and the chill beats, yeah, you know, for sure. And so, so yeah, it, 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 I think that those, uh, restrictions then at some point become, uh, like, uh, like uh, it becomes like a certain vibe, a certain sound, a certain. The restrictions become your creative fuel. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just that, dude. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally feel you on that. Like, I can't even disagree at all. But yeah. Like, it's people would always. I would always wonder how people get like certain sounds, mm -hmm. you know. But you kind of just have to figure it out within like the restrictions that you do have, and like, essentially instead of trying to sound like somebody else, people don't realize that even Logic, what we're recording on right now, there's so many configurations you could do to just one thing where it's really limitless, but people just want, oh, I just want like that DJ Mustard sound right yeah, now. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? It's like, yeah, bro, like, just yeah. don't sound like DJ Mustard. Just sound yeah. like yourself. Figure yeah. it out. No, totally. I, and, I, and I think I really 100% uh, agree with you on that. Um, I do think, though, that if you're starting out, it's okay to copy like when you're when you're figuring out stuff right when you're like say for example as a producer if you're figuring out your sound it makes sense to sort of like oh i like this sound let me try to copy that and then once you do a lot of that the more that i feel like your 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 uh your sound is going to show you know because there are certain ways that you do things that only you can do and that's going to contribute to your sound um so yeah 100 percent. i feel like there should be a uh, there should be a, a leaning towards really pursuing what uh, what makes you you what makes your sound you for sure yeah so then how would you describe your sound oh, from man. your perspective it's I would say it's continuously evolving um, sure I exist within the electronic realm and I have explored different sounds and different vibes um, I feel like you know the 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 Marquidito or the Spasket of four years ago is it's so different from the mm. from the Marquidito of of now. For sure, like, I think lately I've been into listening to a lot of like what I call like tropical music. Um, <laughs> yeah, I but, can definitely see that. Yeah, or yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. So so a lot of like music from the Caribbean, um, you know, reggae dub, um, but then also like a lot of like Afro house. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's something that I, I feel like is really speaking to me at the moment. Mm. Um, I feel like there's a, as, as someone who actually grew up in the tropics, you know, in the Philippines, mm -hmm. there's something about those genres that I, that mm. feels like home to me. There's a certain pulse, like yeah, when you yeah. hear a, a dembo or, or a reggaeton beat, you know, mm -hmm. it's like that feels familiar, even though that's not my culture's music. That feels you, you could sort of like it's there's a pulse to it's it. It's the islander shit, yeah, dude. It's yeah. like cause you know, like back home in the Philippines, like my my mom just lives like right along the beach and shit. Wow. So when I'm there I got like fucking chinelas on, yeah. I got like shorts yeah. and I'm just like Yeah. Yeah. I'm chilling, dude. <laughs> and it's like whenever like my girlfriend, she's from Hawaii. Uh -huh. So when I listen to like the J Bugs or whatever, I just I feel like I'm at home. It's like some hundred shit going 100%, on. Hundred percent, yeah. But it's interesting, dude, because 
you know, even you, you take from like the tropical sounds and whatnot. I can't really map a sound that really emanates from the Philippines. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know anything about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think just by someone who actually grew up in the Philippines and sort of like swam, like swam in, like swam, <laughs> swam, yes. swam in those waters, you know, like I, I feel like it is in me. It is embedded in me. I, I. I could sometimes like figure out, oh, okay, that's like a Filipino in- influence in terms of like say hmm. like pop structure and how you construct melodies. Um, um, just growing up and listening to uh, Filipino music, yeah, like it's definitely embedded in me. But sometimes it's hard to sort of like figure out, oh, that's it, or, or you know. How would you explain like Filipino music then? Because honestly, like I was born in the United States, so I mm-hmm. never really got exposed to too much Filipino music. Like all I really got was like the Ocho Ocho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know oh what I mean? God. Like I couldn't really get anything else other than that. Right, right. Man, I don't know. It's I feel like there is a certain there are certain parallels between, say, the music coming from here in the States mm-hmm. and also in the Philippines. Like, like I remember my dad would play this band, uh, Filipino, like, soul band. Mm-hmm. Um, they're called VST and Company. Okay. Um, and they sound like Earth, Wind, and Fire combined with, like, Bee Gees. Like, like those, like, falsetto. Got like, you. Like, and like, really, like, so, like, funky, like, Yeah, beats. yeah. Um, and, and 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 they both sort of exist in the same time frame, like mm-hmm. 70s, like early 80s. Um, and so I feel like a lot of Filipino music takes inspiration from the West. Um, but then at the same time, there's a certain way. I would say even it, it would it would probably be much more uh, um, uh, obvious, like with, with lyrics, you know. With, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I'll, I will totally agree with you on that just because... Even on like karaoke nights and shit, you know what I mean. If you yeah. ever been to a Filipino party, it's nothing but fucking karaoke, lumpia, oh, and other food. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But it's like the reason why the reason why I know about the Bee Gees or know about Earth, Wind, and Fire is because my parents, my grandparents, my aunties and uncles, they would always sing records like that. Hundred percent. Yeah. So I, yeah. I totally, yeah. I, yeah. I see that now. How Filipino, um, I guess traditional Filipino music really takes from like. I don't know, what is that, like the 70s, 80s mm-hmm. type of vibe? Like, yeah, I can see yeah. that clearly now. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're talking about is Filipino pop music. Yeah, 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 um, for sure. But I think if you want to go like really like deep into like Filipino, like traditional, um, like indigenous like music, mm-hmm. like that is a whole different sort of like, you know, world. Um, and growing up, like there would be like folk artists who would pursue the, those sort of sounds, um, but they're not as mainstream. And so you have to really dig deep. Have you dug shit. before? I have. Um, yeah, yeah, I have. Um, and also just by playing in, 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 the, in the gig circuit in Manila, um, yeah. sort of expose you to some of the uh, subcultures. And, mm-hmm. and I've seen like some people like pursue that sort of sound. Um, but but you don't hear them a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Well, I feel like the Philippines just being being as small as it is, like I could see it really trying to just take from other cultures and like in terms of music, at least mm-hmm. you know, really taking from other cultures and see what's popping. Because even like hip hop, hip hop's really growing in the Philippines oh, right 100%, now. Dude, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But it's like pop has been very prominent over yeah, in the Philippines. Yeah. Like they get things so fucking late that dude, like yeah, yeah. you realize that the stuff that we're living over here in the United States right now will probably get to them in like three, four years. And it's like, damn, that shit's old, but it's new to them. Yeah. No, it's interesting because I feel like that has been changing in the past, you know, decade, like, you know, thanks to the internet. I feel like what we're, what's popping here when you go to Manila, it's like you would see that same exact scene. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, It sort of reminds me, uh, a few months ago, I was there, you know, okay. for vacation, and you know, I went to a barber, you know, cut my hair, and and he was telling me about uh, the the hip hop scene in, in the Philippines, right? Because okay. like he's a rapper himself, yeah. And, you know, he was freestyling while he was there. <laughs> and it was That's dope. Sick. You know, he was sick. freestyling in Tagalog. Oh um, shit! And uh, and he was telling me about this dude. I forgot the name. Like he was like 
Oh yeah, this is the uh, uh, this is like real like gangster rap like okay. in the Philippines, and like this guy is like like he he. He he, you know he he walks the walk, you know, talks the talk. Yeah, for you know, sure. Like, like he lives in the hood, and like, and and this guy is almost like, it's almost like he's a, um, in terms of like being an independent artist, he's like Chance the Rapper. Like he actually, like, oh wow, like like puts on his own shows, like very independent, he, very independent. He's not signed to any major label. And it's like wow, this guy is amazing. And then he pulled up a, a, a video on YouTube. It's like man, this it, it was it was like it was like. Sold out. It was just like full. That's of ill. So yeah. he's like you. Yeah. Don't, you don't remember his name, but he's that guy. Yeah, I, I will look it up and I'll send it to you. No, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, it was really dope to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, it's interesting because I guess it embeds in my head that the United States isn't the only people who really does fucking like hip hop music. You know, mm-hmm. like, and I remember the interview I had with Stupid Young. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't even realize there was like a small. Cambodian community over there who was like really with the shit, you yeah. know, really with that yeah. gang shit. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I remember initially, you know, going to the Philippines my first couple times around, and my parents would always be like, you know, don't wear any rings, don't mm. wear any like chains or jewelry right, because right, like right. they will essentially they'll murk you over there because yes. yeah. you stand like the fuck out. Yeah. And, you know, I always felt like the Philippines was just like one of those safe spots growing up, but then as you come older, you come to realize like, damn. Like the hoods, it's in the United States, but it's also in the Philippines too. Like that shit's real. Yeah, the struggle is the same. Um, Which sort of reminds me um, the power of, I guess, hip hop. You know, Hmm. as a as a movement. Obviously, hip hop has evolved in so many different uh, you know directions. For sure. uh, But. I guess I'm talking about the hip hop that started like in the early days, like you know, seventies, eighties, yeah, like, yeah. early nineties. Like I would say like the the hip hop that um was more political, was was more sort of like uh, uh like like this vessel that 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 became uh, a, a way for for African Americans to actually express like what for sure. they, what's you know, on their in their souls. And I feel like a lot of of, of people who are who are not African American, who are minorities. Yeah. Sort of like, this is my story. Like like this, like I could huh. I could relate to this, you know. And and I feel like that's probably the reason why there's a lot of us, Asian Americans, you, know, you that are that sort of like, oh, that's our that's my story. And, mm-hmm. and then therefore like pursued hip hop as, as our way of expressing ourselves. I know? hear you because it's like I think naturally as human beings, we gravitate towards things in which we can relate to. Yeah. And as you said, even though hip hop is African American culture, you got to remember that like Asians are also considered people of color too, you know? So even though, even though in the United States, we don't feel, you know, we don't get the same backlash that African Americans do in the United States. Like it's probably just as crucial, like in China, mm-hmm. in the Philippines, yeah. in Japan, yeah. because you know, like yeah. even the Bushido shit, where people were getting, you know, people would kill each other, and I'm just like, bro, like that shit's nuts to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, shit, no, no totally, <laughs> like, totally, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and, and for me, um, so so that thought was was really like in my head when I was seeing this video of you know when my barber was showing me the video mm-hmm. of like all these people who are l- lower. Like like lower class or, or lower uh, what you call it like like lower like uh, like lower in social status social, or, yeah, social yeah. status like really digging like really like in this in in the show and just really enjoying themselves and just like oh yeah like like they they felt something there they they felt mm. like their story is being is being told back to them or yeah or, you know like, like 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 they're not being outcasted like right. you know what i mean exactly it's, i feel like the artist i, I really want to know who the fuck you're talking about yeah, like yeah, that yeah, artist no, totally. but it's just like yeah that guy's like a perfect representation of like yo he's speaking for not only his hood but then like the people in the philippines who feel the exact same exactly. way exactly and, you yeah. know we were having this conversation right beforehand like there's really just not enough representation for Asians, let alone Filipinos in the entertainment industry. It's nuts. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. And I think, you know, I mentioned this to you earlier. I feel like we are the second or third largest uh, minority group, like in, in, I would say, California. Or Filipinos or Asians? Filipinos. Okay. Filipino-Americans. Yeah. Um, 
and but yet our our art our expressions our, our food isn't as known you know as compared to other uh asian americans well see i feel like i feel like you know just growing in a filipino household not that i was raised this way but a lot of my homies they were born with like you need to be a doctor lawyer mm. type shit you know what i mean but i have like a whole bunch of filipino homies who are just they're just into like making music doing whatever like see i'm from the bay area and right now biggest filipino dude out the bay is pilo Pilo, yeah. And uh, Noodles, Kehlani's yeah. DJ. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just seeing people like that, I'm just like, wow, like, if they could do it, I could do that shit too. Totally. Totally, 100%. I think, and think, that's, I think what you touched on there is the power of representation, of actually mm-hmm. seeing yourself, like, represented in, in these areas, in these domains that, that, that interest you. You know, like, for me, um, I have a similar story, like, I the first Filipino dude that I watched live as a producer is Free the Robots, right? Okay. And that was like years ago. I would say like almost like a like eight, nine years ago. I saw I saw him live and you know, he was just like rocking it. He was just like rocking this crowd. And and for me during that time I you know, I I was still in the middle of like finding my voice as an artist and then I saw him and it's like, oh man, like it's possible. Like this dude looked exactly like me, you know. Like, like, like it's possible. beard and all. Yeah, yeah, beard, like glasses. Yeah, you know, yeah. He looks kind of dorky. Um, and, you know, like I, I'm a big, you know, like it's like this, you know. Like, Self awareness. Yeah, yeah. He's he's yeah. And, well, now he's he's the homie now. No, but, no, that's like, cool. Oh, that's yeah. sick, dude. Yeah, he's like. Yeah, it was so inspiring to see that. Did you ever talk to him about like what you just told me? No. You should, bro. Yeah, you I really should. Should. I should. I should. I should. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like it's one of those stories where it's like you kind of just come full circle. Yeah. Type of shit. Yeah. It's it's funny because like uh, um, whenever I'm in the Philippines, he's here, and whenever he when he whenever oh, he's God. there, I'm I'm here, yeah, and he yeah, would yeah, like yeah. we would just like exchange like DMs, like oh, yo, Mark, I saw you on. Uh, Cause like there's this like ad where they used my face or you know, <laughs> like, Yo Marlene sends me a picture. Yo Marlene, yeah, yeah. I saw you like here in in Makati, you know. Um, but yeah, like you know we, yeah. Yeah, well, Actually, shit. I mean, yeah, however yeah. you keep your connections, right? Yeah. Um. So even though like from my perspective, it's really like the doctor lawyer thing that really prevents Filipinos from being like totally represented in the United States. Like mm-hmm. from your perspective, why do you think we're being or why we are underrepresented? Hmm. Yeah. That's a good question, man. I think I think uh, a part of it is not seeing enough representation. Um not seeing that that you too can do it. Um so that's one. Um second is, you know, another thing that you touched on is like, you know, all our lives like our, our families like tell us or at least indirectly tell us that here are the options for you to succeed, you know? Um, and I, I don't blame them for that. You know, um, most of our families are immigrants and that's what they did to survive or to actually make it in America. And therefore that's the only thing that they mm. know, you know? Um, some of us are lucky to have, you know, really support your parents. Like, yeah, do it. You know, it's going to be hard, but do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I guess it's the traditional, the traditional way of going about things versus this new conventional ass right, thing. Right, right. Because I think back then, social social media wasn't even a job like five years ago. You know what yeah. I mean? Being a YouTube influencer, cele- influencer or whatever yeah. like that wasn't a job before nah, yeah. and i think i think coming from like a i'm not a parent but you know like if i put myself into like a parent's perspective it's mm-hmm. like as you said like the doctor lawyer thing is yeah. literally all they know plus on top of that like i think filipinos are so into like oh like did you eat yeah are yeah. you healthy yeah yeah you know do you have enough yeah. money to survive right, and like right, pay right. your rent you yeah, know what i mean like they're always care. yeah they're always so yeah. concerned about that shit yeah. because we like they grew up in a not in a very impoverished uh, mm-hmm. state. Right, right, exactly. And um, yeah, like mo- most parents, most Philippine parents are very risk averse. You know, and it's like that's too risky. Or like, mm. how will you eat? Or how will you pay for your own rent if you're pursuing music? That's the same conversation that I had with my dad. You know, hmm. a long time ago. You know, it's like you wanna, dude. My dad supported 
my music like so much, right? Yeah. But then still, like when the time came for me to actually, you know, I told him, hey, dad, I'm going to move to the States. I'm going to study music and I'm going to pursue music as, as a career. And he's like, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? <laughs> um, and so, you know, and, and prior to that, uh, prior to me pursuing music school, I, I have like a business degree. And I did that oh, wow. for, for my parents, almost like, you know, like just because to sort of satisfy them to like, oh, you know, like, like, like it's going like to be it, okay. I have like yeah. this fallback, you know, just in case things didn't work out. But I feel like that ended up actually becoming useful for me as an independent artist, you know, to actually have, to know like the business side. And what, things, yeah, like know, in what like, ways? Yeah. Um, how business works, income expenses, you know, um, marketing make sure you don't fucking yeah. spend more than you make exactly 100%. And, that, that, and that's so key man yeah that, that's so key if you're if you're someone who who, who does this for a living uh, independently um if you gotta yeah you, you definitely have to uh I, I guess for me just speaking from my own, own experience it's like you gotta keep your overhead like really low. Yeah, you know? and this is the reason why I don't have a car. You know, it's like I Damn, just keep dude. it like really That's low, nice. only the essentials. You know, like I could always Uber if I need to. You know, but um, at least for me, and you know, I, I it might be different for other people, but for me, like having not having a car is not a big deal to me. Yeah. I mean, especially you're, with like with like, especially in LA, it's like, bro, you're you sound fucking crazy right now. I, like, I what, do, you don't I have do, a fucking yeah, car in yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, I mean, like you know, like like if if you know if you didn't offer to to give me a ride, I'll I'll just be like taking <laughs> Ubers or whatever, you know. That, and that's totally fine. Like, there are ways to go around it. But for me, like w- w- when you look at it, like even like there are so many like un- unseen. Uh, like expenses that that goes with having a car, you know, like you have to pay for like insurance. There's like parking Fucking and there's gas. gas, you know, like like it all adds up. Like I think we sometimes uh, as creatives, sometimes we don't see like like the the, the like money, like like the, like the the way that it sort of like just living a certain lifestyle sort of drains um, money like from your pocket. Um, and I feel like, uh, as a creative, that that's it's really important for us to actually think of of, of money, you know, like and how wow. that fuels us to actually do more. I don't know if you can tell by my face, but I'm so fucking intrigued right now. Yeah, like it's it's fucking nuts to me because it's like, as you said, bro, you don't think about all the little things that add up. Because I literally just filled my tank yesterday, and I'm yeah. like a quarter down already. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, well, I gotta, you know, I gotta fill by next week or something. Sure. But yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it goes back to the conversation about like the MPC and the MPD and having like these finite amount of instruments. You got to learn how to work with like the very minimal things that you have. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, oh, it's wow. almost like to be an artist, sometimes some of us pursue a much more minimal lifestyle because the thing that's very important to us is our art. And that everything is like secondary. Like for me, or at least at least that's just the way that I think. You know, like yeah. for me, like making music, and and recently like pursuing making videos, is like it's so important to me that everything is secondary. You know. Yeah. I mean, except for like relationships and stuff, like that's high in the priority. But, but a certain lifestyle, a certain like, you know, like for me, like you know, spending money on on say like clothes or or or, or you know. Like, that's not important to me. Like, for yeah. me, it's important for me to actually have enough money for rent so that I could survive another month <laughs> to actually, like, make music that wow. would someday, you know, like, like fuel my career. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like that, is, that is, like, how I prioritize things, um, which might be different from how other are. Like, there's no right or wrong way to do no, this. No, for sure. But for me, that makes sense in my head to do that. Oh. Yeah. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> what the fuck, <laughs> dude? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like hella in fucking shock right now because I never really thought of things that way. Mm. I was literally just telling you, like, fuck, man. I mean, just a minimalistic lifestyle in yeah. itself. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm like lost. I'm lost in my own thoughts right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, l- l- let's talk about that. What, what, what are you thinking right now? Yeah, I'm thinking about like how. Like, there's so much shit going on in the world that we really forget 
we forget what it's like to just simplify our life mm-hmm. and just even for you, you came from fucking Long Beach today, and yeah. your goal was okay. How do I get from point A to point B? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Take the bus. It probably costs you like what five dollars. Yeah. At that. For me, if I drove down there, it's like, well, first I have to get the fucking car. Right. And then I got to make sure I have enough gas. I need to travel like an hour one way and then another hour back. That's yeah. probably like depleting like a quarter of my tank and shit. So that's yeah. another like, that alone's like probably $15 in itself. You For know sure. what I mean? Yeah. And I don't know. It's getting me to think how we like we as human beings like we're fucking like hoarders and Mm -hmm. we grab as many things as we want because we feel like we need it but at the end of the day it's like we don't really need yeah even half the shit that we own yeah yeah 100 like like for me like sometimes the question for me that i always ask myself is like how much is enough you know like Hmm. you have enough right now mark you know like 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 how, how much opportunities are enough for you you know like you're getting royalties you know like that's that's good, you know. Um, sure, like I, I would say that um, I, I'm 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 not saying that we shouldn't be ambitious. Like 100, percent we should be, yeah. And, and, and to always strive for more, but let's let's not forget what we have, like right now, mm. and, and and not, I guess not fall and not not fall into that mindset of like having like more, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, at least, the way that I see it, that could be a dangerous path to actually just like wanting more. You know? Yeah. Well, I think the idea of wanting more is actually counteractive towards happiness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, it's it's the hunger for like, oh, I I need more fucking shirts. I yeah. need more shoes. Yeah. How do I get that? I need more money, so I need to work more. Yeah. I need but, more likes. I need more followers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And all yeah. that shit. At the end of the day, I I was actually thinking the other day. I was like smoking a little bit, and I was <laughs> just like, bro, like realistically, like. None of the shit that we have like actually matters, dude. dude. Like it really doesn't fucking matter. Hundred yeah, percent. Like to yeah, like yeah. to somebody else, this conversation probably doesn't fucking matter. But yeah. it's just like the little pieces of it. Like I would hope people take for the rest of their lives. Like, damn, dude, do I really? I I hope at the end of this conversation, people really think like, damn, do I need all this shit? Mm-hmm. Like, do I yeah. really actually need all this shit? Totally, totally. I mean, like we, we're we're all gonna at some point move on and pass. You know, for and, sure. And what happens to all this shit? You know. Um, yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, how did you reach this mindset, I guess? Like, at what point did this shit, like, really just click to you? Hmm. Let's see. I don't know, man. I've always been interested in, um, I guess, I guess, well, here's the thing. I think related to your, to your age question, I think the older that you become, the more that, that I guess you know what your priorities are and, mm. and also knowing like how how much time you have left in this world sort of like forces you to prioritize what is really important to you you know like for me it's like it's art you know and it's it's it's, it's creation it's creativity it's my relationships and you know and, and that becomes like the thing that you care about most you mm. know and so um yeah, I I think it comes with age, but at the same time too, I feel like I always have this interest, just this interest in in improving myself like more and more like through. I, I love reading books. I love reading like self help books. You huh. know? Um, well, I feel like we don't. I feel like people yeah. don't get enough of that. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like the whole like self help sort of like industry. It's an industry. Um, could be kind of scammy, but there are, hmm. there are a lot of like things and, and books and liter- literature out there that's very helpful in sort of like, you know, is the thoughts. Is that minimalistic mindset something that you got from like those self-help books or was there like more that you got from reading? Yeah, yeah. M- m- some of them I, I've gotten from books. Some of them I've gotten from like podcasts that I listen to. Some of them from, from you know, YouTube. Um, yeah, it, it's just helpful to sort of like be, I guess, be open to knowledge regardless of where it comes from um and i feel like we live in a in a in a in an era where we have an abundance of knowledge i feel like we've hit a point in in human history that shit we we know we know a lot of things you know we know a lot of things and and for me the 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 thing that really interests me is like how can you actually live like your best life you know and and Hmm. and, and and some you know 
there definitely there's no one path to it, but I feel like the pattern that I see is um, um, being very minimal, being being hmm. like knowing what is really important to you, and and one one nugget that that, that is very like uh, I feel like is very um, helpful for me is um, th- this quote: uh, "Comparison is the thief." of happiness comparison is is the thief of joy and i think that that really speaks to a lot of mm. creators like us where i feel like we compare ourselves so much with our peers with just go on social media and you you automatically compare yourself to other people like look at how many likes do they have how many followers do they have you know i think it's not completely bad because like i feel like our our mind our minds can't help but think that way, sort of mm-hmm. like have this like barometer, but at the same time too, there, there's a side of it that robs you of, of, of happiness and contentment. It's like, man, I did some shit today. You know, like I, I've actually finished this podcast interview today and it was great and I had, you know, like a lot of fun. And then, and then, you know, when you go online, like you, you follow this like big podcaster and it's like, oh, there's so many likes from, mm-hmm. from there. You know, like, like you tend to now sort of like, oh shit, like, feels empty now yeah yeah. well because i feel like in terms of you comparing yourself to another person like a lot of people don't realize that this creator or this artist or this musician they've been doing it for a while now Mm -hmm. and especially coming from people who are just starting now from ground zero you can't compare yourself to somebody who's been doing it for fucking 10 years bro like yeah like you can't like not even on like the follower aspect of it all you know what i mean like Mm because the, the followers will come and go. It's w- it's whatever at the end of the day. It's really whatever. But like the experiences that these artists and creators go through, you can't acquire all. You can't acquire ten years of knowledge in fucking ten yeah. minutes. No, no, no. I mean, like, I, I feel like with with um, I feel like with technology that has sort of hacked and sort of like uh, um, like accelerated our learning. Yeah. But I feel like. With say for example, like with, with art or as a musician, like someone who, who's been making music for ten years, and someone who's been making music for a year, like there's a difference there in both mm-hmm. of like their their, under, their understanding and also their experience. Yeah, know? for sure. And so, and I feel like that's one thing that that we don't talk a lot about, like uh, as 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 creators, is that um, like the the thing that we always hear about are people who are uh, you know who who. Like the overnight success, you know. Um, but sometimes you don't hear that uh, uh, these people actually toiled for like years. Yeah. Before before they actually made it. You for know? sure. Um, yeah. Like yeah. you you only hear about somebody's name because they made one song and like that shit went like super viral. And right. then it's like I know somebody's like really fucking good. Yeah. If you listen to a song and then you're like oh this guy's cool and then you go back like oh they have like this mixtape that mixtape right, i remember right. the first time I when i listened to j cole j cole's my favorite rapper right i i found a star is born and then as soon as i heard a star is born i was like yo like this guy's fucking tight yeah my best friend she introduced me to a uh, friday night lights j cole's like what second or third mixtape or whatever mm. And then when I connected the dots, I was like, oh, shit, this is the same fucking guy. Yeah. And then after listening to Friday Night Lights, I was like, oh, you got one more mixtape? Yeah. Oh, you have another one even yeah. prior to that? Yeah. Like, and they're all fucking good? Mm. You haven't been doing this for what I thought was only a year. You've been doing this shit for like Forever. five, six years. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. nuts. 100%. I mean, like, 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 like Kendrick has the same like, story, too. Like, yeah. You know, like, I just uh, watched this like this this uh, opinion piece on on his like his story on YouTube, and you know the the uh, the video sort of listed like all these like mixtapes that he was part of, you know like the, the monikers that he used, and it's like man like he's been he's been at it for like forever, forever, yeah. You know? Like so so by him actually you know getting to where he's at, he has achieved a level of mastery. You know, and you would only get that <laughs> through like years of like you know. I hear you. I Dude, hear like, you. Like, you know, like you see his like his like old mixtapes. They kind of look like you know, like kind of like dated. Yeah, kind of, for like, sure. You know, corny even, but it's like that's part of his <laughs> journey. You know, like yeah, that's yeah. how he became like where he is right now. They yeah, all man. contributed. Yeah. So. Shit, dude. No, I I totally agree with that <laughs> shit, man. So you said you've been doing your shit for like what t- a decade, close I, to a decade now. I mean, 
close to a decade with like electronic music production, mm-hmm. but prior to that, you know, playing in bands and stuff. Like, I mean, if you, if you add that, I would say like you know, 15. God, and, shit. Yeah. So you're like a yeah. fucking OG yourself, too, I, dude. I, That's I nuts. <laughs> well, in terms of like the music industry, dude, yeah. 15 years is a long ass yeah. time. I mean, professionally, I've been making music uh, for about, I would say, at least here in the States, like five, six years. Yeah, for professionally. sure. So I feel like I still have a lot to go. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, I could definitely yeah. see your ambition on that because then you did say that you went to music school too. Mm-hmm. And then there's always this debate about how, oh, I'm just going to like fucking like fuck around and see what I could come up with. And then there's people who take the music school route. What are like right. the differences you saw after going into music school? Yeah, it's interesting because I guess in hindsight, um, I think, I think well, I, I don't regret any decision, right? Mm-hmm. But if I was to do it over again... I wouldn't have taken the music school route. Wow. Because I feel like I can learn all of that stuff. I, I could have I could have invested the money in say building my an, my own studio, you know, mm. and, and sort of like having collaborations that way and actually learning on the job rather uh. than actually like theory. Um, although I have to say um, going to music school was very affirming and acknowledging for me because because part of that I, I sort of like was doubting like is this for me and mm-hmm. so I think it helped solidify it and, and frame like this is your path and then also being in a uh, community with people who are like you who are passionate about music um, and also like yeah like also just networking with, with people like and some, some of these people like I'm still friends with that's good this day. so yeah, I think it's helpful. No, it, it really is helpful because, you know, I was telling you prior to this, like the story of the lunch table and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess what really helped me out with college was not only the networking shit, but like really understanding the basics that came with radio broadcasting. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. And I feel like school, as much as they try to sell you, oh, you know, go to school, get a job, all that shit. It's, first of all, it's really not that fucking easy. <laughs> but second of all, like, there's a lot of basics that aren't necessarily taught in the real world. And especially in a time like this where everything's just so fast paced mm-hmm. and you just want to learn the quickest way to do the shit. It's like, yeah. no, like, yeah. it's the slow burn, like yeah. slow learning that really yeah. instills something in your head. And that's what, 100%. at least from my perspective, that's what school helped me out with. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. I feel like, School is there to give you like sort of like the fundamentals or actually even just the space to actually learn stuff and, 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 and be and, and explore. You know, I feel like college uh, is, is that place where you can actually explore like different mm-hmm. like um, ways of thinking. I feel like, you know, like college, at least for me, was where I actually explored, you know, like activism and all that sort of stuff. Oh, really? Um, that's when I explored different types of music, too. Um, and this was back in the Philippines when yeah, I was yeah. in college. But, but yeah, I feel like it's, it, as an experience, it is helpful, you know. Mm-hmm. But it, it, is that the only path? No. no. Yeah. Definitely yeah. not. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Like people, people end up like learning on their own or with like another group of creatives and end up... Look at fucking Brockhampton, for example. Have you heard mm-hmm. of Brock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just fucking like popped off and did their own shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, so you said like... In college, you ended up exploring activism. Mm-hmm. How did that go for you? Because I, I don't know what the fuck was going on in the Philippines. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> to I, be 100. I, I mean, I, I would call myself... Like, I was interested and mm-hmm. I was curious about it. And I think mainly because I was also, like, into, like, punk rock during that time. And, you know, a lot of, like, you know, like... like animal like like veganism um animal <laughs> rights you know like stuff oh, like okay. that which is kind of weird like in the, in the philippines of the philippines yeah yeah you know, i mean we eat fucking pig's blood and shit exactly <laughs> <laughs> and so that was kind of weird but i let myself sort of explore that and, and sort of like uh, um you know a lot of like liberal and, and leftist like politics which mm-hmm. is very um i guess Countercultural, like when, in the context of the Philippines, you know, where it's it's a it's a conservative country, you know, and so and so yeah, you know, I I don't, I mean, I I went to like certain like rallies and stuff like that, but but yeah, I think it was just me being like a twenty year old, just like sort of like, well, you you were just curious. you were just curious about yeah, the shit, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
So I mean, it makes sense. Even like the politics of all things is really, you know, it's a very like gray area to really get into and shit. So mm-hmm. I, I totally feel you on that. But like, I think what's important to take away from like your situation was that you're curious and yeah. you want to know about like the different things happening within the country. Because yeah. especially right now, living in the United States, I feel like a lot of people are really wanting to hopefully get involved, but at least at a minimalistic like standpoint, just be aware about what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. You can't live in the United States and not know what the fuck is going on. Well, totally, totally. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's interesting because I feel like as someone who grew up not in the United States and now living in the United States, I feel like there's so many shit that we do here that affects other countries. Like policies, you know, like, like policies like that we have, um, you know, uh, uh, like even just like tariffs, you know, like, like, you know, like, you know how like Trump is like, he has this like trade war with like China and okay. like, Chinese products are like tax tire or something like yeah, that. Yeah. That affects the Asian economy, you know, like I feel like the U S has so much power that it could affect other countries' economies. Yeah. You know, like even indirectly, if, even indirectly, huh. you know, and so that's something that, I've, that, that, that I realized, like, once I lived here, it's like all these policies that our president sort of, like, enact, like, especially foreign policies, like, it does affect people. Like, it does affect, like, other countries. I feel like as, as American citizens, we just think of, like, oh, we're, we're just thinking, we're just taking care of us. We're just thinking of us. But then we tend to forget that this affects the world, mm. you know, because we're so huge and we're... We're, we're just a rich country. That's why we have so much say, you know, in yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's... Yeah. That's some deep shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, no, totally. I mean, I, you know, I try to keep updated with what's going on. Um, um, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think at the end of the day, though, like, I think it takes takes a group of us to really like band together and make each other aware about the situations happening in the world. I don't think, I really don't think that all the responsibility should land on one person's shoulder. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like the same way I I think about how like Bruno Mars Mm -hmm. or Manny Pacquiao shouldn't be the only people fucking representing for Filipinos in the United States. Like there's way more of us too. And you know, I think the conversation we were having before this was just like, I guess us as, like, Filipinos, especially in entertainment, we need to find ways to, like, really build Mm -hmm. and, like, group together so that, A, we can be aware about what the fuck is going on in our homeland, and B, just know that, like, there's a community out here in the United States Mm -hmm. that are willing to push each other to, you know, like, just move further in life. Yeah, dude, that's something that I think about. I've been thinking about a lot lately. Like, how do we... How do we gather filipino american creatives so that they would have a certain that we would have a certain community that we could that we are free to reach out to each other to connect mm-hmm. each other and to to network you know um and take care of each other you know in investing each other's projects and and have partnerships together you know um i think that really i think one inspiration for me is um so so my so my wife is Korean American. Right? Okay. Um in, in in Korean culture there is this concept of ge, spelled as G E. Okay. Ge is is a group of people who actually pull together their resources and then and then every month, whoever is the member, they they would give that money. And it, hmm. and it just sort of like revolves and re- circles around, okay. them, you know. And and this is how Koreans, Korean businesses like thrive, you know, like you see like, like laundromats and you see like, Mm -hmm. and and that's how they sort of like took care of their own communities, you know, yeah, yeah. we have all this money and you know, like Nico, here's some money, you know, like open up that business and and then, and then next month would be like another person, you know, for sure. Okay. So, so it would be, you know, like, like even, even just like concept and idea alone of of just like taking care of each other is really like, man, like we don't have that in the... In, I guess in you know Filipino American like circles so, and, and and if we do it's very sort of like clicky and yeah sort of but like... you see like even even for me that's kind of difficult to 
like trust. Like for example, mm-hmm. as a Filipino American, I was raised in like a Catholic household, right? So sure. we would go to church every Sunday, and yeah. then like they would really press, not press, but they would tell us like, oh, you know, give a dollar here, give a dollar there to the church and whatnot, just to find out that the church is actually using the money for like some bullshit. And I'm just like, bro, like yeah. you know, I'm I'm giving this to you, thinking you'll put it to good use, but it's kind of yeah. like a betrayal of my trust at yeah. that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like. I mean, not in strictly Filipino culture, but like, mm-hmm. you know, just seeing instances like that, it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to like, oh, uh, here, absolutely. here's a dollar, Mark. Oh, yeah. here's a dollar, da-da-da. Yeah, da, da. yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. Like, you know, you've, you've been burned before. For yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. Same, same, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess, like, one thing I'm really pushing is like a lot of like free work that's to be done. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if, I, if I don't want to give you money, for example, it's like, it's kind of like, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Yeah, I yeah. will help you out this way. You will help me out that way. And I, I feel like that's the best way, as opposed to just like you know, like giving. Oh money, yeah, like, absolutely, you know. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. E- even just like connections. You know, connections mm-hmm. are powerful, and especially like in, uh, in in creative like worlds. Like 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 sometimes who we know really contributes a lot. For sure. You know, and even just like me, sort of like connecting you with another person that I feel like would be a good fit for, say, the podcast or a future partnership. For like, sure. That's powerful. You yeah. Know? And e- even just that, even, like, not talking about money, even just, like, relationships. Like, yeah. Yo, I know somebody. I saw, you know, God, let, let me connect you guys, you know? Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah. And that's all it's about, man. It's all yeah. the fucking unity and shit, man. I'm, I'm loving the fucking unity in the air, man. This is my shit. So, you know, we're actually going to end it right there because, okay. you know what I mean? Like... It's it's just important that, and I'm telling you this, I'm telling that person, you know what I mean? Like, it's just all about fucking unity and making sure that we keep on connecting the dots mm-hmm. and we keep on building with each other. Because at the end of the day, it's like, my family ain't here. Your, you know, your family's over in Rancho Cucamonga or whatever. But it's like, if we can somehow create, s- like, small networks of families... Mm-hmm. We'll, yeah. we'll all be okay. We'll yeah. be safe. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mark Rodito, man. Thank you for coming over to the lunch table, Bro, dude. Thanks for having me, man. It's Yo, um, so where can they find you on like Instagram, social media, all that? Word. So on all socials, it's Mark Rodito, M A R K R E D I T O. Um, and yeah, man, that's it. Like, find my music on Spotify, SoundCloud, like everywhere. Yeah, especially if you want to fucking dance and shit. That shit's fucking groovy. <laughs> Yo, this is the lunch table. Food for thought. Nico Blitz, Mark Redito, Filipinos. Also, shout out to Pogi LA one more time, man. Like, we, this was not planned. We just so <laughs> happened to wear the same fucking shirt. <laughs> and we out. Peace. Word. <laughs>